Hi, in this video I have two UPSs here. This is the 10 kVA and this is the 6 kVA. These are the WPTU and WPRU. One is the double rack mounting and the other one is the tower. So in this video I'm just going to demonstrate how I connect it and the connections are the same for both of these. I'm going to be swapping the connections from this one. This is the 10 kVA and I'm going to put it onto this one, the 6 kVA. In so doing, I'll just explain the connections. The first thing I need to do is make sure everything is off. The power is completely off. In this little installation, there's a changeover switch. If the UPS was fed from the mains, then that would be selecting the mains and if I wanted to feed the UPS from the generator it would be there. In the meantime it is sitting in the off position which means that the power coming from my changeover switch is off. If you haven't got a changeover switch just make sure that the supply that would be feeding your UPS is disconnected. Right I'm just making sure that the power is off. See, this is input and this is output. So if I'm just checking the input wires and there I can see the power is completely off, zero volts. I've also dropped the overcurrent protection here, just in case the UPS had to power on. Although this particular model does not have any batteries inside, the tower model does have batteries inside. So I'm just removing these, and then I'll be connecting it to my other UPS. Right, if you're going to be connecting this one, this one does not have the battery inside. It does need the input. So over here, I've got my input cables. There's my neutral and my live, which will be fed there and there. The earth is shared, and then the output from the UPS is wired there and there. Notice that it does say live neutral earth, live neutral. So we have two wires coming in, because this is a single phase UPS, and two wires going out, and the common earth. All the earths are common. So you can see the chassis is also earth if you are going to be connecting your battery bank because this unit does not have a battery bank you'll plug it in like that and there is my earth wire which needs to be screwed onto the chassis in this case you could screw it in over there and then it will make good contact now it's recommended to use lugs and i'll quickly demonstrate that now since each installation is different i cannot specify the cable but what i can say is make sure that whatever cable you use your upstream protection or your overcurrent protection will trip before the cable is damaged. All I'm doing is I'm exposing a little bit of the copper without nicking any of the cores. I just really tore the jacket off and I will twist this in hand. And now I just need to fit my lug on. Now the amount of copper that I've left there does depend on the type of lug. For example, there's a perfect fit. But depending on the size of the lug, as you can see, this is now a bigger lug for a bigger cable and obviously it is longer. So you will need to expose the correct amount for the size of lug that you are using. So in this case, if I was using that size lug, I would now just bring my crimper and then I would seat it in there and then crimp it. Alright, so I would have crimped it like that. And there you go, there's the first wire, the live wire. The size of the cable is very important. Now, the circuit breaker here says 63 amps, which means you would need to use a cable that can handle 63 amps. However, if the power that you are feeding into the UPS, for example, your main supply, is protected by a smaller circuit breaker, for example, maybe you've got your circuit breaker that is feeding the UPS is only 20 amps, well, then you could get away with a 2.5 millimeter cable. Just keeping in mind that the cable run, the length of the cable is important important. If you're running a longer cable, you will need a thicker conductor. So it's very likely that you'll be connecting your UPS to your mains, which means there'll be a circuit breaker in your DB board, which will then be feeding the input to this UPS. So that means that the circuit breaker, which is feeding the UPS, would need to be checked in order to specify the cable. For example, if I was using this circuit breaker, a 40 amp circuit breaker, none of these cables would be sufficient. The point is that the cable must be able to handle more current than is stated on the front of the circuit breaker. Now specifying the cross-sectional area of the cable is not so simple. One has to look at the cable run and the temperature that that cable will be exposed to. For example, if you're just going to be running it on a wall in trunking, you tend to have a better current carrying capability of the cable. For example, if I look at a 2.5 millimeter cable, if the cable is installed in conduit, in a wall or in trunking, 
you can see that I can get 24 amps from that cable as long as these are single core PVC insulated cables. But if I go to a table for multi core PVC insulated cables, notice that there is a slight derating factor because the cables are closer together, obviously not able to dissipate as much heat. If the cables are going to be in an insulating wall, here is a cross-sectional view of a cable running in an insulating wall. We have a heat treatment in this wall and therefore there is thermal insulation here. Obviously the cable cannot dissipate as much heat, therefore we have to derate the cable once again. So if we have a look at that same 2.5 millimeter cable, now it's dropped down to 18.5 amps because of the installation method. These things need to be factored in. I'm just generally discussing cables. Obviously, you would need to consult your local standards and determine the best cable. A general rule of thumb is if you're not sure, just go to a thicker cable. And then there are other environmental factors that also influence the choice of cable, but that is beyond the scope of this short video. Just a breakaway to further explain the wiring layout for the UPS. Your utility, your electricity supplier would be feeding into your home or office, into your DB board. Then from your DB board, one would need to connect via a circuit breaker to either your changeover switch or it could have been connected directly to your UPS. So there is an upstream protection device, which in this case is just a double pole circuit breaker. I like to use a double pole circuit breaker to open the live and the neutral. And the current rating of this circuit breaker defines the thickness of this cable. If you are only using a 20 amp circuit breaker, then you could get away with a 2.5 millimeter cable as long as the cable run is not very long. But keeping in mind that a 20 amp circuit breaker would not provide the 10 kVA rating for the UPS, the UPS would not be able to get the full current from the supplier. So one would need to use a 25 amp or 30 amp circuit breaker depending on your input voltage. For example, if it was a 30 amp circuit breaker, if I say 30 amps times 230 volts, if the line voltage is 230 volts, that gives me 6.9 kilowatts. And while the UPS is rated at 10 kVA, or for the smaller one, 6 kVA, the power in watts, the bigger one is only rated at 8 kilowatts, and the smaller one at 4.8 kilowatts. So there is a difference there. So keeping in mind that the upstream circuit breaker is what will define the size of this current, as well as the amount of current you want to feed your UPS. Maybe you don't need the UPS running at its maximum, then a smaller circuit breaker would be sufficient. Now, from the output of the UPS, we then connect to our load. Notice that I can also feed my UPS via a generator, and that is the purpose of the changeover switch, is when the utility goes offline, I can manually change over or use an automatic changeover to a generator to then feed the UPS while there's a power outage. In terms of the earthing, your DB board would have its own earthing and be earthed to a common earth rail, but then your UPS also has to be earthed and the earthing is common to all the appliances, which also means that the earthing of the load is also a common earth point. And it's always a good idea if you have additional earth spikes or earth points in your business or home, and then, then one can connect directly to those earth points but the bottom line is that all the earth points are tied together wherever possible. Now the output from the UPS also needs to be specified in terms of the size of the conductor. Noting that this is a 10 kVA UPS, you would need to connect an appropriate size conductor for your load. Remember that this may be connected to batteries and when it is running off batteries, a current higher than the current that was supplied may take place. Now on the output side, one has to specify the conductor side accurately. If this is a 10 kVA UPS and I divided by 230 volts, the maximum theoretical current is 43.4 amps. So that means that there is a possibility of getting 40 Three amps there. Now, under normal circumstances, the supply from your utility, which is uh, protected by, in this case, maybe a 20 amp circuit breaker, would have tripped. But if this was running off the batteries, you may get that 40 odd amp current. And that is one of the reasons why you need to specify that cable correctly. 
Now on the tower side, the connections are the same, input, output. So all I need to do is connect the input from my utility or my generator, and then the load will be these two over here. The input is sitting over here, and the output is over there, the same as the 10 kVA. So I've just connected the in-feed. These are the wires coming from my utility or even the generator, and then the load are these two wires over here. So in summary, the output wires, the wires going to your load, must be able to handle more current than the power output for the UPS. For example, this UPS is a 6 kVA UPS. If I divide it by 230, I get a theoretical current of 26 amps. That means that the cable I use must be able to handle more than 26 amps. The type of cable you use, whether it's flexible, stranded, or solid core, is also important. Also depends on whether your loads or stationary equipment or if they are going to be portable right so to sum up input live neutral output live neutral the live is the red the neutral is the black and now i can put the little cover here for safety now if you have the 6 kva the batteries are built in there's a battery bank at the bottom of the unit and then if you want to daisy chain and have additional batteries you would follow the same principle as the 10 kva i would plug in my battery connection over there and then i would earth it in the same manner now that the ups has been wired i can engage the changeover switch and feed the ups the power from the mains in this little setup, this goes to the UPS. So these are the input wires to the UPS, the live and the neutral, as I showed. But in my case, I just made a plug to plug it in. So now it is plugged in and I can now energize the UPS from mains. And the UPS is now energized. I did lift the overcurrent breaker at the back of the UPS to make sure it's in the on position. And all I need to do is now turn it on. Now on the side here, it's showing me my load, how much loading is taking place on this UPS. And you can see the load has dropped down once all the loads have charged up on the initial turn on. Please remember to consult your local standards. There are rules in terms of the requirements for connecting emergency supply. If the emergency supply is going to be fed back into the DB board, one would need to demarcate that, have clear signage illustrating that as well as its own neutral rail separate to the neutral of the original installation. The output also requires overcurrent protection and there are a few other rules that one needs to abide by. Please consult your local standards when you're doing this installation. If you are using these UPSs, I've noticed they are very intolerant of dust. So if you have your UPS in a dusty environment, it's good practice to switch it off and blow it out from time to time. You could use a blower, but never blow the UPS out if it's on. I feel like these UPSs are missing a little bit of foam on the inside to collect some of that dust and then these can be clean. If you do put it on the outside, it does give you an indication of how dusty your environment is. But whatever you do, do not restrict the airflow. If you are going to install little foam sponges on the inside, just make sure they are very porous. All right, thanks for watching and cheers.